South Korea, a small nation with few natural resources, but filled with manpower and determination. Its economy in the 1960s was in shambles after the bloody Korean War. Who would have known that the miraculous development of South Korea sprung from the efforts of less than 20,000 workers? In the early 1960s, the Park regime dispatched around 20,000 Koreans to Germany to work as miners and nurses. In exchange for their contribution to the miracle of the Rhine, they brought back German investments and development funds that made the miracle of the Han River possible. The Korean workers harbored hopes of improving their lives and willingly took the challenge of going abroad. In doing so, they encountered new culture, opportunities, and economic security. Unbeknown to them, they had provided the means for President Park to explore ways for Korea to become financially sound and opened the door for Korea to step into the international market. In 1963, South Korea and Germany signed a labor recruitment agreement that would provide Germany with Korean laborers to work as miners and nurses. The collective Korean term for the miners and nurses sent in accordance to the agreement is padokuloja. In exchange, the Korean government was guaranteed to receive necessary funds, in essence seed money, that would be used for Korea's infrastructure and industrialization. Korea sent 7,936 miners to Germany from 1963 to 1977 and 11,057 nurses from 1965 to 1976. In the eyes of Korea, the move of the Pato Kuloja to Germany was patriotic and was made on behalf of Korea's economy after the war. Their stay in Germany is seen as one that was full of grueling hardship and pain. It is true that the Pado Kuloja all encountered some degree of emotional and physical hardship. However, most of those who left had personal motivations behind their decision to work in Germany. For many of them, going to Germany was a chance to change their lives and help their families escape the extremely difficult lives they led back in Korea. High unemployment and poverty rates ensued after the Korean War for many years. Others had more adventurous motivations for going and hoped to see more of the world. Many assimilated to German society. Koreans married Germans, raised families, and enrolled their children in German schools. In general, the Pato Kuloja had a three-year contract. Most of them were able to permanently escape poverty within that period and move to countries like the United States or Canada. Those who returned to Korea accounted for less than a third. What started as a labor recruitment agreement became a cultural encounter and the beginning of a new life. <laughs> Adam Smith's invisible hand theory states that people gravitate unintentionally towards employment which is most advantageous to society even if they are only seeking their own gain. This explains how the individual efforts of the Pato Kuloja not only improved their lives, but also fulfilled the government's objective of gaining capital. South Korea and Germany had a variety of factors that motivated their exchange. The Cold War divided the world into two economic and ideological zones the capitalist bloc, which included both South Korea and West Germany, and the communist bloc. The two nations shared numerous similarities such as the separation of their people and the constant fear from the divided portions of their nations. West Germany underwent post-war economic reconstruction, dubbed the Miracle of the Rhine, and needed labor to drive its industrialization. Since West Germany needed a reliable source of energy for the growth of industry, coal mining became Germany's number one energy source. However, 
Most German laborers steered away from labor-intensive and dangerous industries, especially mining. On the other hand, most Koreans were desperate for any type of employment at the time when the national unemployment rate topped over 30%. In addition, foreign currency was of great value in Korea. The foreign currency the Korean miners and nurses brought back to Korea in exchange for their labor in Germany amounted to around US $50 million. In 1965, Korea's per capita GDP was $105.13. By 1976, it soared to $874.64. Before the dispatchment of the Padok Kuloja, there was no available employment for Koreans even with a college degree due to the devastated economy. However, the Padok Kuloja sent 80% of their earnings back to Korea, allowing family members to acquire an education take advantage of new areas of employment, and contribute to the development of the country. Korea contributed to the miracle of the Rhine, Germany's post-war economic reconstruction, in exchange for Germany's contribution to the miracle of the Han River, the fastest period of economic development in Korea's history. President Park Chung-hee dreamed of salvaging Korea's destroyed economy. But this seemed nearly impossible, as there was nowhere in Korea to gather funds for his ambitious plans. The dispatch of Koreans to Germany was the stepping stone for his vision to reconstruct Korea's economy. According to Professor Michael E. Robinson of Indiana University, that is the idea of exchanging labor and technology in order to gain experience and capability later in the evolution of Korean development. The foreign currency that the Padok Kuloja brought provided the basis necessary for President Park's exploration of development plans, such as the construction of the Seoul-Busan Highway. On a broader scale, it inspired and instilled into Koreans the hope that dreams can be realized with hard work. This change in mindset breathed life into projects such as the New Village Movement, which required the direct participation of Korean locals. The Korea-Germany Labor Recruitment Agreement was also the beginning of an exploration into overseas labor export, the international market, and development plans for the miracle of the Han River. In addition to the Koreans' work ethic and diligence, the dire conditions back in Korea motivated the Padok Kuloja to work assiduously in Germany, thereby elevating Korea's international reputation. The dispatchment of the Padok Kuloja was the first case of overseas manpower export from Korea. Based on the success of the Padok Kuloja, more international manpower exports designed to bring foreign currency for Korea ensued, such as civil construction projects in Vietnam during the Vietnam War and engineering and labor projects in the Middle East in the 1970s. The miracle of the Han River was one of the most dramatic and inspirational economic makeovers in Korean history. The Korean miners and nurses sent to Germany, or Padok Kuloja, had a significant role in galvanizing Korea's economy as they brought much needed foreign funds in exchange for their work. Not only did the Padok Kuloja contribute towards Korea's economy, but they also encountered new culture and started new lives, which allowed them to bring themselves and their families out of poverty. Their perseverance, diligence, and work ethic brought newfound respect for Korean laborers in the international market which fueled foreign investments and began Korea's exploration of economic development plans. Mm -hmm.